former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu, was accused of being silent on Amotekun. Now he has spoken and he had quite a few things to say. And Governor Shea Makinde of Oyo State has been asked to reverse the dissolution of the local government councils in the state by the Attorney General of the Federation, Justice Abubakar Malami SAN. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Finally, former Governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu, has expressed his opinions on the Western Nigerian Security Network, also known as Operation Amotekun. Now, the All Progressives Congress stalwart stated that while the initiative is praiseworthy, it however needs some operational and conceptual modifications or else failure would be inevitable. He also castigated those who criticized him for being silent on the initiative, saying that they did so for personal political reasons. And joining me to discuss this issue and more on Plus Politics this evening, I have with me political analyst Zeal Azaka Iwe. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. And also I have with me a legal practitioner, Evans Ufeli. Good evening, Evans. Good evening. And thank, thank you for joining us. Yes. Tinubu has finally spoken up. Um, there was a whole lot of lambasting on him before this time. Uh, do you think it's speaking up now? I'm going to start with you, Evans. Do you think it's speaking up right now um, necessarily um, made any difference to the issue ongoing, the controversy around Amote Kung as it is? Well, I've always uh, thought that um, we can't really get the best from these uh, politicians when it comes to issues of pressing uh, security concern of this nature, especially when such politicians have uh, uh, have uh, some uh, links with some maybe promises of uh, you know leading the country in the future. Because, well, alleged. Uh, uh, that, that's uh, alleged. That's still yet to uh, be well, substantiated. It's not very clear, but uh, <laughs> we we can see the rhythms because it took a lot of time. He's a leader of he's a leader in, in the southwest who should have uh, made comments on this issue for a long time. He he left it aside. Yeah. There are a lot of insinuation that possibly because uh, he does not want to ruffle feathers with uh, the northern elites uh, who are uh, obviously against the movement because uh, it, it appears to them that it's targeted against uh, the Fulanese. So that perhaps must have... Uh, but if we look at the substance of what he has said, he has made valid points, uh, uh, albeit late, yes. Uh, we're we're going to come to those valid points okay. in, in the course of, of the oh, show. Okay. Okay. Now, you're a, you're a legal practitioner, and in the light of Tinubu speaking up right now, by law, was he under any obligation to have said anything at all? And, and if he's speaking up now, it should be on the grounds of morality and the fact that he's, he is a leader, especially in, in the Southwest. By law, was he obligated to say he's anything not under, for or against Amotekun? He's not under any obligation to speak on the issue. Yes. I mean, he's not the president of the country. He's not the initiator of the movement or the initiative. Mm. He's just uh, a, a citizen. A citizen, a former uh, Lagos State governor. governor. Okay, so, uh, but the reason a lot of people were putting pressure on him is because he has been in the forefront uh, of a political vanguard, especially in the APC uh, uh, section of the country, a political party. So people expected that uh, he should be able to make certain remarks, and those remarks were moral obligation. Uh, people wanted to see his view, to yes. hear his views on, on, on the matter. And when he kept silent, uh, they just inferred that it's possibly because of his ambition. Now, now uh, I'm going to come to you now, Zeal. Do, do, you, do you see any weight after Tinubu speaking out now? Do you see any weight he has been able to throw behind the Operation Amotekun as, as is obtainable right now, given the, the controversy around the Operation Amotekun? I think uh, Tinubu emphasizing what Tinubu said or didn't say is um, conforms to the theory of the dead cat. You know, when there's an issue on the table, you bring out a dead cat and it just serves as a distraction. There are core issues that brought about the need for the governors to come up with the uh, Operation Amotekon. Yes. What Tinubu said or didn't say is, in my opinion, a distraction from those issues. We have a major issue around securing lives securing properties, and the governors as the chief security of officers of state are handicapped. Yes. What we should be discussing is how do we resolve that issue? Is this the route to resolve the issue of Operation Amotekun? Is this what we should be doing? If it is, is this how we should be doing it? Those are the things I think a, a lot of people putting a lot of emphasis 
on what Tinubu said or didn't say is just a distraction. It does not change the substance of the matter. Substance of the matter is there is a major, major security lapse. The Nigerian police is not equipped to deal with it. What do we do about it? We should be talking about progressive action to take care of the security of lives and property. Tinubu's statements in that light are neither here nor there. Okay. Now, you, you're a legal practitioner. I'm going to refer to your law because all of these things need to be interpreted, interpreted by the law. Yeah. Um, the, the AGF came out last week to say proscribing the operation as illegal. And Tinubu speaking, finally speaking of, he said conceptually there is nothing wrong the, the establishment of, of the outfit. There's nothing wrong with establishing the outfit and it doesn't seem to insult the constitution. It, how, it, how do we marry these it, together? It, it, it uh, does not insult the constitution yeah. because, in fact, the Amonteku have its root in the constitution. Because if you look at section 14, subsection 2 of the 1999 constitution, you see it is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people through which government derive a legitimacy, that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government the security and welfare of the people. And those are the two items that we have a collapse in the country. So when you have an organization, okay, that, that is initiated for the purposes of securing the lives of the people, it is not against the constitution, but the constitution has already laid it clear that the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. Now, the AGF said it is illegal. Any government? Yeah, Federal no, 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 government, no, 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 state wait, 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 government, any government? <laughs> Let, let, me, let me take it up. Okay. I will tell you where they went wrong in Amoteko. Oh, right. I just want to give you the high point. Now, the, the, the AGF was speaking from the standpoint of Section 214 of the Constitution, which said that there shall be a police force in Nigeria and there shall be no order you know, to that effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, then if you, if you look at it graphically, you would want to say that the Amoteko runs contrary to that prov provision of the Constitution. But let me also tell you that the federal government is also in violation of that section because the federal government have created other police uh, arms. They have the civil defense, they have the road safety, they have all, all, all these are agencies that police our lives in one way or the other, however specialized. How be it they were initiated by an act of parliament? Which if you look at section 214, yeah, no, if, yeah, yeah, if yes. you look at 214, 214 says there shall be no order. So the federal government violated it. How be it through an act of parliament? Now, where the Southwest governors went wrong was launching it without passing it through the various state houses of assembly. What they should have done was to start from the state, various state houses of assembly pass it as a law there. Then before you begin to look at a regional conglomeration. Yes. But they just did it, launched it, and they, 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 they are of the view that they can kick off that way. So for, for that, the, 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 the strategy adopted was wrong. The, 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 out, the outplay the, uh, at the inception was wrong. But the initiative, the idea, is not unconstitutional. Okay. But the procedures adopted is where they shot themselves out of food. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come to you in a bit with another question. Zil, you want to react to, to this quickly? Well, it's, it's the constitution. I, I think that the issue of the constitution needs to be taken to court to test. Um, my opinion on the constitution is neither here nor there. I think that the way the state governors went about it was where the deficiency lay in that you cannot just wake up and set up a security force without going through an act of parliament. Now, if they had gone through an act of parliament, then the debate would have been significantly more, uh, significantly different. Yeah. Um, in terms of the constitution saying section 14 you quoted, right? Yeah. It's open to a lot of things, a lot of various interpretations. So the spirit of the constitution is clear. Securing lives and property is government's responsibility. But it does not mean that every government can do anything they like in that regard. Then you've broken down the whole concept of order and rule of law. There is a process to everything. There's a very clear process. If you want to see, if you, if I, unless you're a citizen witnessing a crime, or rather in the event a citizen, there's not even police, witnesses a crime, the laws allow you to effect citizen arrest. It's not the same thing as policing. Policing is defined, it's very different. 
Amoteku, someone compared, and I know he, he's watched the same video because he spat out almost the same words. Uh, I think it was Ghani. Was it? Who says? Who says um, that's why I saw a video on that. Anyway, but the thing is, for example, Lagos State set up LASMA, right? Yeah. LASMA does not, LASMA is set up by an act of parliament. If the Attorney General of the Federation does not agree with it, he can go to court for interpretation, which is what I think a democracy, if that's what we have, should do. You, set, you follow the rule of law if there is a conflict, and that's what the courts are for. The courts will therefore interpret. And if the conflict is not resolved, that's why we have the legislature. They can therefore amend the basis on which the courts have ruled. So for example, there are six states in the Southwest, which means that you have 18 Southwest senators. There are five states in the Southeast, so you have 15 there. And there are, each state has three senators. Yes. Each state says the governor should have primary responsibility over securing lives and property. I was, I was going to come to that. And so the state each of state of governor state, yeah. should call the three senators for their state and say, let us push a bill and take it to the House. Let us debate this matter. I think that is the way to go. Each state deciding on its own to roll out an independent security agency breaches order, breaches rule of law. You cannot enhance a democracy by introducing chaos. All right. Now, I want to ask you this. Um, you did, Tinubu did rightly said that um, the, the outfit doesn't seem to have insulted the Constitution. The Nigerian Constitution, is it binded by law? The Nigerian Constitution? Yes. Is it what? Is it binded by the law? Is it binded by law? Yes. Everything contained in the Constitution? Yes. The, the, constitution, the constitution is supreme. That's what the law says. Yes. And its provision shall have a binding force on all persons and authority throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay, now you, you've rightly said that um, one way the, 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 the start where governors got it wrong is that they didn't, they didn't go through um, parliament. Yes. Now, in this situation, what can be done to remedy it as it stands right now? Yeah, the, what, what can be done to remedy it as it stands right now is that this, um, this uh, attempt to regionalize the process is where they are getting it very, very wrong. Why is that a problem? Yeah, it's a problem because we run a federal structure federal system of government. Every state is autonomous, okay? So every state have the constitutional rights, okay, to make laws. The state has of assemblies to make laws to govern the people. So long as those laws are not at variance with the constitution, okay? So they have that power to do so. So they can do it independently. That's what I think. We, 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 um, they can't do it jointly. They can do it jointly if, like you suggested, their senators come together to push. Well, push even for if the bill. senators don't come together, but they, they need not do it. They need not do it regionally. The, no, but no, if they choose to, if they choose to do it regionally, yes, they can still go ahead. But you cannot have it done regionally across. Because the states are different. There are six no, states. No, no. So, so what okay. are, so there are six states. If, if the six southwest states go, each house of assembly of each state passes a law that says we want to start policing our borders. It can and, be done. And we will collaborate with any other state for the promotion of peace and security of our borders. That they don't have to use the word region, but that therefore means no, wait, I, I, you can I, I, join. The, 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 the synergy is not against the law. You don't get what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, you know, when they came out in the open without any form of legislation to, 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 to regionally agree to enforce a, a very serious issue like security, it, it became a problem because they had to go individually on their various states to pass laws to do that. And when they pass these laws and they want to have a synergy at the long run, fine and good. But without the laws passed in the various states, they cannot drive that process. Okay, let's, let's consider some other security outfits in, in the northeast and north central. There, there are a lot of arguments going on in different quarters. Um, we have the, J, the Joint Tax Force, the JTF, we have the HISBA. And people are back to the fact, what is the difference between this security outfit and the establishment and the operations away from Amote assistance? Maybe you want to throw more light on that legally. Well, well I don't, for the civilian JTF, 
I, I, there, there's no much reason except that, uh, there's no much difference except that uh, one was um, formed principally by the military or by the people in collaboration with the parliament. military. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know, but I don't okay. think so. The civilian JTF out of parliament, I have never seen any law or read anywhere that the law was passed without effect. But that of Kano, the Hizba, I think there is a legislation to that effect. There is a legislation to that effect. It's in their laws. Okay, the laws of Kano State is there. But as regards the, uh, the, the civilian laws of JTF, Kano State, the, the Sharia, I, I, I should try the Sharia, the Sharia law. Uh, uh, it, it has the, the semblance of a Sharia, Sharia, law. Sh Sharia uh, policing structure. Okay. Uh, Evans, you want you want you want to say something about this? That's Evans. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so. I mean, it's one, I, I prefer to stick to the issues. And a lot okay. of times we throw distractions and so we have no traction. One, we have a security issue in the country. We have 400,000, give or take, police officers. A third of them are assigned to individuals or politicians. We do not have enough police for policing the country. We do not have enough police spread around within the country. The governors do not have control over the commissioners of police because by the same constitution, if the governor gives the, the governor has the right to give the commissioner of police an instruction, but the commissioner of police has the right to confirm whether or not to carry out the instruction. Yes. So in essence, the governor really has no real control. Those are the issues. How do we remedy these issues? We all know the federal structure of policing is not efficient. We all know from studies, from statistics, from what, ev mostly every, from what many countries have done successfully, community policing is most effective. It is really unusual to take somebody from Lagos State, bred in Lagos State, lived in Lagos State, and expect him to effectively police another state. So community policing grows outwards. We should be discussing how to make this part of our laws. How do we enshrine what the number one, if we start regional police or state police, more than likely it will follow the deficient structure of the federal police. We know the structure of the federal police is deficient. How do we start to fix those structures and then push it down or fix it locally and push it up? Those are the discussions. Amotekun has, in my opinion, brought these issues to the forefront. These are the kind of things the senators should be debating in the House. That is what progress to me looks like now. Okay. All, every other discussion, who did it first, who didn't do it, those to me are distractions. Okay. Now, there have been a few concerns um, of which one, a uh, one time governor of Kaduna State, Balari Ben Musa, did come out to say the federal government should not allow Amotekun to, to go on because he sees it as a grand plan eventually to, for the establishment of, of, of Dua or Dua Republic or Dua People's Republic. Let's consider, let's consider that thought for, for a moment. And in Tinibu's, one of his comments, he did say that his position on Matikun is not blind or uncritical, and said that there are several organizations and functional aspects of the proposal that could cause some problem if left unresolved. We want to consider some of those things he, he felt could cause some problem if left unresolved. You see, this issue of everything, every idea being a grand plan, by one region to take over or to succeed is the problem we're facing. We, 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 the, the lack of trust, because the conception of Nigeria itself came with a lot of uh, distrust, came with a lot of uh, issues that are not uh, well defined. And you see that the more we progress, the more the year goes by, we are pushing forward for federalism, really. And because the senators as National Assembly had the opportunity sometimes in June, July uh, 2018, where they voted for the constitutional uh, amendment and all voted against devolution of power. What is happening now is the effect, the reaction of the but people. But power seems to be centralized right now. Yes. There's not so much is, of devolution of and power we're experiencing. And, and that's not it's, federalism. It's yes. And that's not federalism. So now we are choked. Now, you see this Amoteko is just a definition of federalism. Decentralize the police force. That is what it means. How be it is coming from just a, a region. Okay? So we must look at this thing. This idea that any move is an attempt to create a republic out of the country. 
we must begin to think. I mean, the constitutional conferences we've had, the problem we have is that from 1953, we started the constitutional conferences. 50, 53, down to 2000, and um, the one that uh, Lord Junagan did in 2014, we've had about 13 constitutional conferences. And then we pack all these things and keep them somewhere. We don't implement them. Then we have National Assembly that should function in a way that creates a federal structure. You know, so why we have refused to create a federal structure? Different regions will be springing up from different areas to make demand, just like the Amoteco, to get it from the back door. If we're not going to decentralize power by voting for federal structure, true federal structure in the Constitution, then the various regions will begin to demand for specific items. This, today we're talking about policing. Tomorrow it will be another thing, another region will come out with a policy. Oh, let, me, let me come to Zeal uh, quickly. Let me take Zeal's thoughts on this. Any thoughts on this, Zeal? Well, I, I tend to agree with those with um, Evan's thoughts almost entirely. That, that, those, are, those are the issues that we have not addressed and the symptoms we keep springing up. Something else we have to consider, if you remember, uh, there was a period a lot of states could not pay salaries. The federal government had to build them out. Yes. Now imagine you have, without sorting out, and you talk about the federal structure mm -hmm. regarding police, we've not talked about revenue. Revenue. We, we don't have that. So you, you if, imagine a situation where without fixing the proper structure, you have state police or regional police or whatever you want to call it, and the states cannot afford to pay them their salaries. What do you think they will do at that point in time? So, so those are the things that if we do not sort out, trying through the back door without putting the proper structure in place is just going to introduce anarchy that okay. looks like rule of law. Okay. Now, while you were talking, you did actually bother on one of the things that um, Tinubu voiced out when he finally spoke up. Um, he actually said that uh, a motocon should have been fashioned to the peculiarities of each stage rather than having a regional structure. What difference do you think that would have made for with at this point in time? Yeah, because he, he was looking at the, the, the difference or the peculiarities of each state. Do you think it That's, being regional in its operation right now makes it less um, effective? I don't think so. Okay. Because, because if you look at kidnapping, for example, which is one of the boiling reasons, kidnapping, arm robbery, and then, uh, what do you call it, uh, other crimes. Banditry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they cut across, they cut across. Then uh, you have, it cut across all states, virtually all states. So the peculiarity he's discussing there, uh, maybe he's trying to be philosophical, or he's trying to, because he, he was actually pressured to talk, perhaps uh, he's uh, stretching it, as he understands it. But I don't think that there is, um, a, a structural difference between Ogun State and Lagos State, for example, in terms of crime and criminality. Maybe in terms of economic um, activity, uh, there may be a difference. Maybe in terms of agricultural activity, there may be a difference. But as to crime, crime, crime has no, it, it, it's the same thing everywhere. Nowhere is really safe in, in Nigeria right now. Okay. So we need a security force of this nature, but we should consider the operations. Uh, someone has said that it's going to be largely, that the Amotek is going to be largely uh, uh, manned by unlettered hunters and things like that. And I said, where did you get this from? He said, but that is what it is. So, I mean, people are making different comments from different places, but I, I do not think there is any peculiar difference in terms of crime across Nigeria. Okay. Now, let's, let's come to the AGF just for a moment, if we can, before we go on, on a quick break. Now, it's, it's evident that the, the governors didn't actually consult with the AGF from the statement that Tinubu put out and even the statement of the AGF. Um, they say they consult regularly with police and other security agencies. All right. Now, based on this, do, do you think the, the statement put out by, by the AGF um, invalidates Amotekun in any way? No, it does not lie in the mouth of the AGF to uh, proscribe or to. It doesn't lie in the mouth. If he wants to go to court, he can go to court to, uh, you know, have the Supreme Court, you know, interpret the Constitution. He can go to court, but he cannot on his own begin to issue orders, and they need not consult him. It's not the chief security officer of the state. They consulted the IG. The IG even went to Ibadan where they had a, a conference together and where he even came out to say he will support the movement. So now we don't need an AGF. The AGF is stepping out of the uh, confines of his jurisdiction. And we, we, we must make that clear, that he ought not to be issuing orders 
and all that. Oh, thank you very much, Evans. Thank you very much, Zil, for your contribution in this segment. Thanks for staying with us. The, the solution of local government administration in Oyo State and how the Attorney General of the Federation has reacted to it is up for discussion next. Do stay with us. <laughs>